Hi there, my name's Johnny. I'll be taking you through your trial run. We're on Captain 3, so let's go have a look. Oh yeah, so we'll start on the outside of your boat, we'll start at the front and we'll work our way backwards. So on my right hand side here in this little hatch you'll find your mud weight. It's effectively an anchor. Places you might want to use that. You can use it in our broads areas or you might want to throw it over the front of your boat if you're moored up stern on to stop the boat swinging left to right. Remember, the broads are tidal so if you're going to be on it for a while check it's not come off the bottom and you can't stay on it overnight alone. Coming over to my left hand side you've got your life ring. Hopefully it stays where it is all week but just in case if someone does fall overboard First thing to do, switch off the engine. Once the engine is off, throw it as close as you can. There's an emergency ladder on the back of the boat, which can help you get out of the water again. Always take care when walking on deck. Make sure you've always got your life jacket on and you're using the handrails to move safely. You can stand anywhere on your boat, but make sure you don't stand on the glass hatches or the roof. The teak is handy if you want to lower your TV aerial. The TV aerial is found on the top of your boat. The height of your boat will vary depending on which one you're on, but you need to make sure you lower your TV aerial before you go into any bridges. To do it, all you do, lift up the handle, lower it down towards the screen, and that'll give you a few extra inches going under any bridges. So, now down to your daily checks on the boat. There's only two checks you need to do each day, your water and your toilet tank. For your water, every time you stop, we suggest filling it up with a hose. They're distributed across most moorings. Try and keep it topped up, keep that tank above half. For your toilet tank, you'll probably have to get it emptied at least once during your stay. Again, there's a gauge on board to see how full that is. When the time comes, there's nothing you have to do yourself. Take yourself to any boatyard or yacht station and they'll do it for you. If you come back to us at Brooms, we'll do it for free. Other places will charge you. Now we come to securing your boat. Again, you need to remember the broads are tidal, so your boat's going to move up and down throughout the day and night. Whenever you're tying your boat up, it's always important to make an angle with your ropes. Always miss the first post and tie on to the second one. To tie on, all we use is a little double half hitch, knuckles up, right hand under left hand, straight over the post, and you repeat that over and over again. Knuckles up, right under left, straight over the post, give it a wiggle to pull it tight. So we're now moving on to the lazarette area of your boat. There's a few features to point out. We'll start with your chair. It's reversible. Put your hand in the middle, give it a good tug, and it'll swap over so you can have your legs facing out the other way. Same to put it back in reverse. The canopy, there's a few options. You can unzip it completely, leave it down, or roll it up over here. Next, we move on to the storage. There's loads of storage on your boat. Under here, you've got a massive waterproof area. Drinks, suitcases, empty bags, anything that you want out of the way you can put down there and it'll be nice and safe. Most important feature out here is your gas bottles. They live under this shelf here. If I lift this up, there are two gas bottles in there. You should have more than enough for the week. If one bottle runs out, all you have to do, close one on the top, open the other one gently, let the pressure build up and they'll swap over automatically. If you have any problems at all, give the emergency shut off a quarter turn and we'll come out and see you. Okay, so the first thing we'll point out is your back doors. They open right out, they're by folding. So on the left hand side here, you pull up a hatch, this will open right out and clip in. The other side, very similar, lift up the handle, push it away from you and give it a push and they'll open right out. We now move on to your power systems on board your boat. So you've got two systems. Your first one is a 12 volt system. That should be on all the time, shouldn't be anything to worry about. So that's your lights, your starter motor, your fridge, your heating, your radio, anything that doesn't use a three pin socket. Your second system is a 240 system and that runs any of your mains three pin sockets. So for your television, if you've got any phone chargers or a hairdryer, you'll need to turn this on. We've got two ways to turn it on. The first way, use the cable on the back of the boat, it's called your shoreline cable, plug the yellow end into the boat, the other end off to an electric point and everything on the boat will be working, the whole boat will be live. Option number two, you've got an inverter. It's an off and on switch. If you turn that to on, exactly the same as when you plug the boat in, 
everything will be on and working. Only difference is this time you'll be draining the boat's battery. To overcome that, you need to make sure you run the engine a suitable amount of time throughout the day to give you a few hours of charge on the battery. Okay, so this is your inverter panel. It's just on and off. If you flick it over to on, the blue light will come on and all of your three pin sockets on your boat will now be working. If your engine's running, that can be on as long as you want. It's constantly being recharged by the engine. It's only when your engine is turned off and you leave your inverter on that you're going to be draining your battery. So always make sure you turn it off when you're not using it and before you go to bed. So I'll just go through a few of the features in your saloon area. So you've got a free view television. If you want to watch it, just make sure you've plugged the boat in first or turned on your inverter. Moving into the next cupboard, you've got a radio there. That runs on the 12 volt system, so that'll work all the time. On the other side of the boat is where your sofa bed lives. If you need to use it, request extra bedding when you book. Your boat will be fully equipped with heating on board. It's nice and simple. To turn it on and off, press that button once. It's now on for an hour timer. If you want to increase the length of that timer, press the middle button, hour and a half, two hours, three hours, four hours, and so on. To turn it off before the timer expires, press that button again, and the temperature is determined by the strength of the black bar. Okay, so we're now in your kitchen or your galley area. On my right hand side, you have your black hob. Lift up the black screen, and it's a simple gas self-ignition hob. Turn on the gas, turn on the ignition, and it'll come on straight away. Your oven works exactly the same. Close that up. To open the door, you just have to lift up the little silver catch on the right hand side. Open the door fully, and you've got a grill one way, or an oven the other way. To light the oven, the door must be fully open. On the other side is your fridge. That is on your 12 volt system, and that'll run all the time, so your food will be nice and cold with no worries. Finally, down here, is your sink. Any water that goes in there is dealt with, there's no pumps, it'll go in and be flushed out automatically. So you now join me in your bathroom. It's all fairly similar to at home. To flush the toilet, all you need to do, press the white button once and it will flush. In the, behind the mirror, you'll find a cabinet. In there is where your pump out gauge lives at the top there. You're keeping an eye on that every day to see if it's time to empty your toilet. Moving along the bottom here, you'll find two more switches. One's for your lights and the other one's the extractor fan for the shower. So, just going through your pump out gauge, dead simple, it goes from low to high to full. Once it gets halfway to high, that's when you want to start thinking about getting your toilet emptied. So your water gauge lives in the kitchen. As I mentioned, fill it up every time you stop. Try and keep that dial above half and just don't let it go completely empty. So you now join me in your front bedroom. Once again, it should be all nice and familiar. Above my head are your forward hatches. To cover them, you've got a fly net on one side or a blackout blind on the other side. To open them, just twist the grey handles and push up. They also double up as your forward fire escape, so remember that if needed. Round the corner, you'll also find a hairdryer on board. So we'll now move on to your safety features on board. You've got everything on board you need to stay safe. You've got a fire extinguisher under the helm, another one in the front bedroom. You've got a tested carbon monoxide alarm and smoke alarm, fire blanket in the kitchen, and once again, always remember to wear your life jacket. Okay, so now we're gonna have a quick look at your controls. The first thing you need to do is switch on the engine. So take the smallest key, put it in the ignition, turn the key to the right, press and hold the black button, and it will switch on. Once your engine's on, all your dials will come alive. There's quite a lot going on, but luckily you only need to concentrate on a few. The first one is your rudder indicator, and the second one is your rev counter, which will tell you how fast you're going. Moving over to the switches, once again, there's quite a lot going on, but hopefully you only need to use one on the bottom there, and that will switch on your display. Okay, so finally we're gonna move on to your bow thruster. Pressing the red button, and the toggle at the same time to turn it on. If you forget, not to worry, the instructions are written on the side there. It's gonna be really useful for you throughout the week and it'll be explained more on the day. So now we're just left with the throttle. At 12 o'clock, it's in neutral. To move forward, no buttons to press, lock it forward until you feel the click. Back to neutral, reverse is the same, backwards until you feel the click, and then back to neutral. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk you through your shoreline cable. You're looking for a blue electric post like this. The yellow end of your cable will plug into your boat. The other end goes straight into a post like this. 
and everything on the boat should then turn up. Now we're on board the Bolero with a short demonstration of how to assemble the sofa bed. Reach under the sofa and pull out from below the bottom cushion. This will form the bed base. Then, just rearrange the cushions to create a mattress. The sliding roofs of the Bolero are really easy to use. Simply unscrew the catch, Tug on the handle and the roofs will open out, transforming the living area into a lovely outdoor space. Here we are on board the Cadet and it's just a quick video showing you where your cutlery drawer is. Lower the front panel by pinching the catch on the right, then this will reveal your cutlery drawer which will simply slide out. In here, you should find all of the utensils you need for your trip. In this video, we're going to quickly talk you through how to switch the driving position between the upper and lower helms. In order to make the change, you must ensure that the boat is in neutral. This is done by leaving both the upper and lower throttle in their neutral position. The video shows the upper throttle in its neutral position, pointing towards the driver at about 45 degrees. On the lower helm, the throttle's neutral position is at approximately 12 o'clock or pointing straight upwards. When the driving position is set to the lower helm, the lower throttle will move freely between forwards and reverse gear. Meanwhile, the upper throttle will remain locked in neutral. To swap between the upper and lower helms, pull the black dial outwards and twist it so that it points towards upper, as shown in the video. This will now lock the lower throttle and release the upper throttle, allowing you to drive from the upper helm. Be sure to practice this during the trial run. We always recommend quickly mooring up before making this change and always control the boat from the lower helm when passing under a bridge. In this section, I'm just gonna talk you through the start and stop buttons on the upper helm of the Explorer. These buttons will allow you to start the ignition from the upper helm, as well as turning off the engine in case of emergency. To cut the engine in an emergency, simply press the bottom half of the red button and the engine will turn off. To turn the ignition on, the key needs to be turned to the on position downstairs, then once the key downstairs is in the on position, the green button on the upper helm will start the engine. Here is a quick video of the luxuries you'll find on board Clean Sweep. Clean Sweep has both bow and stern thrusters, which can be used together, individually, or in opposite directions to move the front and the back of the boat. As you can see in the video, these are operated by simply nudging the control in the direction you want the bow or the stern to move in. The main function of the thrusters is to assist with mooring up and manoeuvring in tight spaces. Both the bow and stern thrusters can be operated together by nudging both at the same time as you can see in the video. Or you can use them in opposite directions to rotate the boat for extra control. These thrusters make clean sweep very manoeuvrable and they'll be really useful when you come to moor up. We'll now show you a demonstration of assembling the sofa bed. The sofa bed is a combination of the original sofa and the table on board. To lower the table, simply lift the catch and the table will swing one way and lower. It will continue to lower to the height of the sofa. Then all that's left to do is cover the table with spare cushions and this will form the base of the sofa bed. Now we're in the galley and here you'll find even more goodies. The air conditioning, the dishwasher, and on screen now the wine cooler, all live in the galley. 
In order to use these appliances, clean soup will either need to be plugged in, or if you're out on the river, simply turn on the boat's generator to provide the additional power needed. Next in the video, we come to these buttons found behind the sofa. These buttons are for controlling the position of the television. As you can see in the video, pressing and holding the left button will lift the television from being stowed to a position that you can watch it from. The right button will return it to its stowed position. When travelling along the river, make sure the television remains in the stowed position. As mentioned previously, in order to run the air conditioning, the dishwasher and the wine cooler, you'll need some additional power. One way of getting this is to turn on the generator. This is done by simply turning a key in the galley clockwise and pressing the black button next to it. This is shown in the video now. After a few minutes, the dishwasher and air conditioning will be ready to use. Alternatively, you can simply plug the boat in via its shoreline cable. Here's a short video talking you through the door locking mechanism and the heating vents on board your boat. To secure your boat, slide the door shut and insert the key. Turn the key three clicks anti-clockwise. One, two, three. And then one click clockwise and remove the key. The door is now locked. To unlock the door, insert the key and turn it two clicks clockwise so that it's pointing upwards. The door is now unlocked. Leaving the key in this position, the door cannot be locked from the inside of the boat. If you wish to lock the door from the inside, turn the key one click anti-clockwise again so that it's horizontal. You can now lock and unlock the boat from the inside. This is the view from the inside of the boat. Simply shut the door and slide up on the childproof tab to lock the door. You'll find numerous heating vents scattered around your boat. Please avoid covering these vents with any bags or coats as this may stop the heater from working effectively. Once I've gone through the boat's interior and gone over the controls, we'll take you up the river for a quick practice and at the end we'll answer any of your questions about the boat or the broads.